Hello everyone, welcome back to the second part of, about friction. In this lesson, we will be covering about what friction means uh, conceptually um, rather than superficially in the, as in the previous lesson. At a microscopic level, how friction acts and how it arises and we will be covering two more parameters regarding the measurement of friction and we will also be covering why friction is considered to be a necessary evil okay so first we will cover about why friction uh, what sorry what friction is at a microscopic level microscopic level um, when you actually see a plane surface okay or the surface of contact when you see a plane surface under a powerful microscope the surface is actually found to be quite irregular for example you see a smooth fall, uh, polished marble floor but actually it's not smooth as it is in a microscopic level if you see under it under a powerful electron microscope for example it's actually quite irregular in nature because of bond formation as in chemistry um, this is not quite a good illustration because of my drawing skills are quite, quite bad but this should give you a rough idea of how irregular a smooth surface can be now Actually, you should remember that uh, the that so what so to sum up that smooth plane surfaces of contact that you see are actually irregular and rough in nature the actual area of contact is much less than the total surface area so since they are not quite regular and smooth as we thought it them to be the area of contact is quite less than the assumed total area of contact so you see there are quite some gaps and holes inside um, when the two surfaces are in contact now how does friction rise at the points of contact molecular bonds are formed so when these this surface and this surface are in contact with each other you see these are the points of contacts now at these point of contact molecular bonds form because when they are joined together now these bonds uh, when the bodies or the surfaces are in motion these bonds are broken that were previously formed now since those bonds are broken deformation occurs deformation takes place and new bonds are formed so you see suppose this surface moves forward so this bond is broken and another bond is created because uh, at one place the surface of contact breaks and at another place the surface is again uh, this contact occurs so new bond deformation occurs and new bonds are formed this deformation the act of deformation sets of vibrational waves in the bodies or the surfaces in contact these vibrations finally damp out damp out by damp out i mean they end they come at rest and turn into heat energy now this heat energy is basically friction and basically the force the energy which opposes motion okay so to sum up if two bodies surfaces in contact move the molecular bonds break deformation occurs this deformation sets off a wave of vibrations among the surfaces among the molecular bonds this vibration damp out and turn into release itself as heat energy okay that is why you see lubricating oils being given between two surfaces to prevent um, this damping out and the fact that friction lessens because of lubrication. Now if you see this graph, you see in the x axis we have the applied force, in the y axis we have the frictional force. Now what is no NES? In this area of the graph that is inside this triangle, relative motion does not occur. And in this rectangular part that is where it is written yes, relative motion occurs. So um, F max is the limiting friction and this, this part of the graph is the static friction. So beyond um, static friction we have relative motion because up until static friction uh, is there, there is no slip, slipping. So if there is no slipping, there is no relative motion. Okay. So the this is what it in this diagram shows. Now let me introduce you to two more parameters regarding the measurement of friction. One is angle of friction lambda, and another is the angle of repose, which is theta. Now the angle of friction lambda is the angle between the resultant contact force F. Sorry, it should be capital F. Um, 
let me write it here it should be it should be capital F okay and um, and the normal force M uh, so if we see this diagram here, this is the body in contact with another surface if, and capital F is the contact force which arises because of this contact. Now uh, we have two components, one is the parallel component frictional force F small f and another is the normal component N or the normal force. Now angle between the contact force capital F and the normal force N is the uh, angle of um, friction or lambda, so this is lambda. According to the laws of trigonometry, we can see that tan lambda is equal to the ratio f is to n, small f is to n, right? Because this part and this part is both small n, small f. Now, f is equal to mu n, as we have seen in the previous video. So, basically, tan lambda is equal to mu. Or, the angle of friction is basically the tan inverse, tangential inverse of the coefficient of friction, whether it be... Uh, static regarding this condition is basically static friction or rolling or dynamic okay another important parameter is the angle of repose it, it is denoted by theta it is the angle of inclination of a plane with the horizontal if you see an inclined plane when a body is kept on it just about to slide I mean it's just at the point of limiting friction where dynamic friction kicks in it is constant for a given system so it's basically a important feature of a system so in this diagram we will see we can understand more a bit more about angle of repose this theta is the angle of repose this is the angle of inclination for a body of mass m mg is the gravitational weight uh, broken into two components one is the sine component that is mg sine theta one is the downward component and the cos theta which is balanced by the normal force and this frictional force balances the uh, sine component of the weight gravitational weight so we have two equations for equilibrium of the body which is just about to slide for just about to slide condition there is no motion yet okay so still they are at rest so n is equal to mg cos theta they are balanced by each other and small f is equal to mg sin theta they are balanced by each other f is the frictional force if we divide these two equations we have tan theta is equal to f by n now basically it's again mu so angle of repose theta is also equal to the tangential inverse of the uh, coefficient of friction okay now we here we'll learn about um, friction as a menace or evil now why is friction not good for us basically friction causes um, wear and tear of objects which are in contact with each other because as we read deformation occurs so for example in tires in vehicles there the tires undergo wear and tear due to friction while movement so basically that's a bad thing we also have wear and tear of machinery parts factory parts objects which are in constant contact with each other so wear and tear decreases the efficiency and the life cap and the capacity of working of parts objects okay now the as we have read in the pre uh, in the previous slides that friction arises gives rise to heat energy this heat is basically causing damage to the machinery parts undergoing friction and also we need to undergo extra measures so that so that we can reduce this friction so that's also not good for optimizing our resources so how do we reduce the effect of friction because since it's not good for us in parts where it's not good for us we can give go under the following steps one is lubrication as we have read that lubrication minimizes the deformation of the surfaces in contact by forming a thin layer as we have seen there is irregularity between the points of contact lubrication forms a thin layer between them so the surface area increases and there is less friction and polishing polishing reduces the projections between the surfaces in contact so thereby it reduces friction we can also use ball bearings we have ball bearings in um, uh, gears and stuff ball bearings it reduces slipping slipping is the condition of relative motion uh, and one more thing we have to keep in mind is we should avoid moisture between the surfaces which increases friction so 
if you avoid moisture friction can be reduced now how is friction a necessity now friction is necessity because without friction we cannot imagine most of our daily functioning one is we cannot walk it would be impossible to hold on to something to turn our pages to grip something to climb a tree to write with a pen because as we apply force there is also an opposite force acting upon us to keep the body at creative rest condition so we can we can't even imagining uh, going through the roads using our cycles using buses and as we said again walking i mean each and every macroscopic dynamical phenomena motion phenomena is all governed by friction so friction is actually a necessity now there are some important facts that you can note down regarding friction the value of the coefficient of friction or mu depends upon the smoothness or the roughness of the surfaces both are opposite to each other uh, of the surfaces in contact and is also dependent upon the material or the nature of the surfaces generally increase in smoothness decreases friction or increase in roughness increases friction the concept of cold welding let me tell you what cold welding is when two surfaces are made too smooth for example lubricating is okay but if you make two surfaces in contact too smooth so that the forces of adhesion adhesion and cohesion adhesion is the forces of attraction between molecules of different um elements and cohesion is the attraction between molecules same molecules so adhesion causes um the forces of attraction uh, these forces increase when two surfaces are too polished when since these forces increase these forces also increases the frictional forces consequently some uh, so this is actually the concept of cold welding cold welding is actually the joining of two surfaces uh, generally hot welding is done but cold welding is when two surfaces are made too smooth too smooth so that friction increases so this is all what i have to say about the important most of the important points covering friction i hope you enjoyed this lesson now uh, in the next less in the next series of videos we will be covering about work power energy and conservation principles i hope you are enjoying our lessons and uh, thank you for uh, watching this video